So, <sighs> we've got a lot of work to do. This is gonna be a lot of, oh cool, that's a neat strat. And, huh? So let me preface this video with the following. If you wanna speedrun Celeste long-term and get your first sub 30, this is the place to start. Yes, I said sub 30 and not 40 because I know that's the coveted threshold to beat for most runners in this game. And getting from sub 50 all the way down to sub 30 means this video is gonna be a critical point in your speedrunning journey. If you've got all your supers and hypers accounted for, it's time to put in the work and get that consistency in order. As always, everything is possible with practice, and you'll reach your goals in Celeste, again, with practice. Did I mention that practicing will make Sub 40 possible too? Practice building consistency by practicing the game! Sorry, I'll stop. I stress this because now we're hitting some high-level difficult strats and cycles. Intensity is building. It becomes more about having clean movement and scooping up a second or two here and there. But over the course of a whole run, those seconds will add up. Most importantly, like previous guides, have a plan for every room, even if they aren't strats from this video. Unlike the previous threshold breaking guides, there aren't any strats we'll be learning that are major route changes or save minutes of time. Heck, there's hardly any checkpoints that save more than 10 seconds. But that's because we're getting pretty serious into speedrunning at this point. It's becoming less about tricks and more about understanding game mechanics paired with consistency. That's why the maximum potential of sub 50 strats was so low coming in at around 32 minutes. That may sound a bit discouraging, but what I will say is that the remaining game mechanics that exist for us to learn are game changers. They speed up individual rooms substantially and in a lot of ways make them easier to traverse. Easier traversal and more speed equals more consistency and easier times. Think of this video as the intermediate mechanics video I should have made a long time ago, fused with the sub 40 video since they really do go hand in hand when breaking through these time barriers and refining our understanding of Celeste mechanics. With the help of the new tech, strats, and optimizations, you'll see that the lowest feasible time has come down drastically. A whole minute and a half. How are we gonna do this? Well, like I said, itty bitty bits of tech and lots of movement optimization. These are the main focuses for this video. So focus. Why are you just staring at the screen? Move, move, move! And by that, I mean start moving in a more optimal way. This is what I'm talking about. What does all this do for us? Well here, this is a fairly straightforward table showcasing how much time is being saved with slightly more optimal strats in different checkpoints. Just look at all that time improvement in Chasm! Well, there's not a ton of time to save there in the grand scheme of things, but it is a big difference in the scope of city as an individual level. So to demonstrate time save across an entire any percent run, I felt looking at the amount of seconds saved with strats in tandem with how big of an improvement it is from the previous set of strats I've given would help direct where we need to focus our practice on. That paired with some of your suggestions in the comments for chapters you've been struggling with, and we've got ourselves a path to success. For now, we have a lot to go through before getting to the sub 30 barrier since we'll no longer be held back by our tech knowledge, but by how we use that tech. And by extension, how well we use it. Are you ready? Uh, I guess you wouldn't be this deep into the world record pace series if you weren't, so let's get moving! First things first, buffering. You've probably heard this term thrown around a ton, especially with other games, and it can be pretty confusing. So let's make this as simple as possible. What's buffering? Well, first let's dash really quickly twice in a row. Wow, how exhilarating. Wait, seriously, let's clip that and look a little deeper into what I did. This clip lasts 16 frames from beginning to end. You can see that with the first dash, once I hit the button, the dash goes through. That's normal. But take a look at when I press and start holding the button. The second dash doesn't activate. In fact, nothing happens for four more whole frames. Then suddenly, there's that second dash. This isn't a mistake. This is buffering. 
While the first dash was true to button press, the second dash could not come out just yet because of an action restriction. In this case, dash cooldown was preventing me from inputting another dash. But the moment the game recognizes a frame where my second dash was inputted and held and dash cooldown isn't holding me back, the dash goes through. The four frames I mentioned before are collectively known as the buffer window. This window is different from game to game, but in Celeste, this window is open for four frames. This means that I can press and hold an input anywhere within these four frames before it's able to be executed, and the game will still allow the action from that input to be executed on what we'll call the action frame. If I press and hold a button too early where the input lies outside of this buffer window, then the game won't recognize my input as an action on the action frame. This does wonders for consistency. If an input between frames negative 4 and 0 will cause an action to happen on frame 0 any time, that means we'll have 5 whole frames to be frame perfect for so many strats. This involves transition tech, bubble setups, and so many other useful bits of tech we won't get into just yet. So to reiterate, buffering means that you're under some action restriction, so your input is not yet able to become an action. But if an input is pressed and held up to four frames before the next available action frame, your input will become an action on that next available action frame. And that action you have committed is known as the buffered action. Got it? Now let's move on to another long explanation. Now we're getting into ultras. If you've watched any high level any percent runs before, you're probably familiar with this pattern of dashes that happens in a lot of places. It always seems to be a wave dash or an extended hyper, anything that gives you hyper speed into some downward diagonal right after getting that speed, followed by a jump after you hit the ground. And that series of inputs gives you all of this sudden, what you might call, ultra speed. Huh? Get it? Huh? Comment down below at what point you think you get all of that crazy extra speed. Choices. Oh, we've already done this bit. So surely the downright dash is giving you speed, right? It's the most obvious. Huh. How the heck does touching the ground make you gain speed, you may be asking? Well, there's a perfectly reasonable explanation. Just accept that it happens. Don't think too hard about it. It only looks like you gain more momentum from the diagonal dash because you preserve your momentum from the hyper. This means you're holding onto all that speed for the whole time you're in the dash state while moving diagonally. Now let's get rid of all these other bits and bobs and only focus on our interaction with the ground to make it real simple. You don't even need any preserved momentum for an ultra boost. Here's the speed of a regular diagonal dash and here's the speed of a diagonal dash into the ground. There's that ultra boost. But obviously, that's not how we're going to use or talk about ultras in our any percent runs. Once that dash ends, we lose that ultra boost. So that means we got to take things to a higher level. Literally, what we really want is all this speed and pizzazz. Like I said before, by using hyper momentum and immediately trying to diagonal dash toward the ground, we'll get 1.2 times whatever speed we hit the ground with. We also get to keep that 1.2 times speed this time around since we're hitting the ground after our dash ends. Lastly, if you remember from our handy dandy basic mechanics guide, you get plus 40 more speed tacked on after a jump. So as long as that jump is not buffered, you're flying to your heart's content. You don't want to buffer the jump on your ultras or else you may not get your 1.2 times speed since you have to collide with the ground in order to get it. And Celeste is weird in a way where you can jump off the ground without colliding with it. One of the few exceptions to buffer is for the jump on this ultra, but for the most part, just make sure you slide a teeny bit before jumping and you'll be fine. This is one of the most fun mechanics in the game in my opinion, and map makers love implementing this mechanic into mods. In fact, here's a very popular one if you want to gain some practice and familiarity with how it all works. Although you're not gonna do all this in, um, in any percent run, yeah. So, for simplicity's sake, in Celeste, we just refer to this whole chain of momentum going into a downward diagonal dash into a jump as an ultra to get the intent of the mechanic across. So from now on, that's how we'll be talking about it. Finally, moving on to corner boosts. These are pretty straightforward. Just have some momentum while flying into a corner, then climb jump. 
This could be a wave dash or hyper into a corner, a dash into a corner. Yeah, mostly just those two with a few exceptions. We spoke about this at the very end of the sub 50 guide just to make you aware of it. But now it gets serious. Now we're gonna learn how this mechanic actually works. Corner boosts work by preserving the momentum you have leading up to the climb jump, then the climb jump itself gives you a small boost in horizontal speed. How much speed? Well, how much speed does any jump give you? Boom, it all makes sense. Three parts to consider here. The momentum leading to the climb jump, the climb jump itself, and whether or not we executed a good versus bad corner boost. Wait, wait, a good versus bad corner boost? So let's break this down. You've got momentum going into a corner. Cool. Now it's time to climb jump. This can go one of two ways. Either you climb jump before hitting the wall or you climb jump after hitting it. In other words, you either get the good corner boost where you add that plus 40 speed of the climb jump to your momentum before it's preserved by interacting with the wall, or you get the bad corner boost, which means you hit the wall first, lose all speed momentarily, then climb jump, and you end up with the same speed you had before hitting the wall. Now that wouldn't be very top level 40 minute threshold breaking speedrunner of us, would it? It's not over yet though. Time to break it down even further. Hitting a wall before inputting a corner boost is not the only way to get a bad corner boost. You can also run into a corner at a bad speed or position and there's not much you can usually do about that. But there's two things we can keep in mind for a better chance at landing good corner boosts. First rule of thumb, buffer, you remember that one, huh? We just talked about it. Your climb jump before hitting a corner. That way, you can guarantee a climb jump on the very first possible frame. It won't guarantee good corner boosts, but at least make them more likely to happen. Second rule of thumb, try to have a setup or queue that lines you up just right for a corner boost. You'll see these setups later in plenty of places, including Resort and Ridge. While good corner boosts are nice, we're just trying to make sure we hit them. So in order to guarantee any corner boost, you have to be high enough on a wall where after jumping, you can get around the wall in four frames. If you're too low on a wall or delay the climb jump for too long, well, you ain't going anywhere. And that'll bring me to my last note. Two jump buttons will help so, so much from here on out. Please, I can't stress this enough. Make life easier on yourself, especially with what's to come. Namely, dream double jumps. Getting out of a dream block, you learned you could jump. Now with that handy, dandy, second jump, hint, hint. You can press both jumps back to back out of a dream block and get even more distance and speed. Unfortunately, it can't ever be that simple. First things first, you got a buffer jump out of the block. Now, while you've only got five frames to jump because of that precious buffer window, you'll still have eight more frames to do a second jump because of freeze frames and coyote frames. Boom, sub our guide knowledge application coming in clutch. To put it simply, optimally, you have five frames to press the first jump, then eight frames to press the second jump, and boom, speed. You'll also hear two jump sound effects when done appropriately. If you only hear one, you only did one. So try it again, and again, and again, until you can feel out those windows for both jumps. Practice. This takes a lot to be consistent. And with said practice, I'm sure you'll find it pretty useful, but arguably not as useful as dream hypers. This is bizarre. You know those coyote frames? Well, if you're allowed to jump using them, you're definitely allowed to hyper using them as well. So it should be as easy as pressing jump and dash at the same time while you're leaving a dream block, right? Don't, don't answer that. You already know the answer. There's always gotta be an explanation. Think about what we need to hyper. We need to be in the dash state. We need to be crouched and we have to jump while in that dash state. And we know that to be crouched, we either have to diagonal dash or demo dash. I'm telling you right now, don't you dare diagonal dash for your dream hypers. So demo dash it is. Quick tip about these coyote frames. You don't get a ton of time to abuse them. It's only five frames. So I'd recommend pressing and holding your demo button after exiting a dream block, then shortly afterward, press jump while exiting a dream block. Oh yeah, you also can't use your coyote frames if you try the diagonal dash dream hypers. So again, use your demo dash. Now let's get into the execution. Like I said, this isn't as simple as demo dash and jump at the same time. You've gotta hit it during either the freeze frames or coyote frames that exist after leaving the block. A good visual can be to look ahead at the white edge of the dream block before exiting, then quickly pressing jump after demo after Madeline passes that white line. Simple concept, 
difficult tech to master. Practice this like a billion times in places like 7A 1000 meters since that's really only one of two places you'll be using it in your run, but it's still important. Keep in mind, you cannot buffer demo dashes while crouched in midair. You can see this by trying to demo dash in the air twice back to back. If you're still crouched when going for that second demo, you'll simply uncrouch. This is important here because you don't want to enter a dream block crouched or you'll exit crouched and get a dream super instead when trying to dash. We really don't need those. Stick to dream hypers. Hey, hey, hey! You still with me? We're almost done with the mechanics, I promise. Last note, it's less of a specific tech and more of a methodology to take with us on our speedrunning journey. What are some of our mantras up to this point? Practice with purpose, try hard stuff and choose the strats that work for you, have fun, practice with purpose again. So one more addition to all that is to keep movement optimization in mind when analyzing your runs. This involves observing your wall bounce heights, how soon you're hypering when landing on the ground, getting rid of unnecessary climb jumps, yes Tio is watching, and plenty more. You'll see that with the new IL videos, movement is massively cleaned up and optimized not just by using the new mechanics, but by shortening the times where I'm not moving or may be in the air for too long. Heck, even fast falling counts as movement optimization. Okay, okay, okay. We're done with the mechanics, let's get on with the show. We've seen the full run twice now through the sub hour and sub 50 guides, and I think a lot of movement is starting to get redundant. So that's where the table I mentioned before comes into play. I'll still be introducing some of the tech mentioned up through cities since there's a lot to work on there, but being able to see which checkpoints have the most improvement in terms of strat choice helps narrow our vision to work on some critical points in the any% percent speed run. Also, hopefully, it'll end up making this video a lot shorter. Last, but very important note before we start. If a room is in this video, it's worth practicing. Give each and every one of these strats a fair shot. For the rooms that would require more practice than you think, I'll throw this berry up in that corner. That doesn't mean you should ignore it, or else that'll come to hurt you when you're going for sub 30 eventually. That being said, if you can't find the consistency for the room showing that golden berry in the corner, then don't be afraid to drop those strats. Again, give them a fair shot. You won't be good or consistent at a lot of these rooms at first, but practice and repetition are the keys to your success. So without further ado, We've got our mechanics, we've got our mantras, we've got our speedrun tool, and we've got our determination. As well as too much time on our hands, so let's go! Prologue. Same old story, get less than 30 seconds and you get a gold star. Okay, next. Look, we've already gone through this entire run twice now. How different can it really be? Oh no, already? Well, time for quarter boost to commence. At least this one is fairly straightforward. After the transition, don't press any directions, just wave dash, hold jump, and you'll be perfectly set up for a corner boost. Remember to climb jump as soon as you can when approaching the corner. You'll fly right by it, climb jump over the wall, then right dash and wrap up the room. We also talked about movement optimization, and this room is a perfect example of that. What's the difference between these two versions of this room? Obviously, one ended up being faster, and on close observation, we can see why. This wall bounce is way too long! Even after landing, we're waiting too long to throw out our extended hyper. There's plenty more examples of optimizing movement we'll be seeing, but these are the kind of pauses and extra movement we want to start phasing out in order to get cleaner and faster runs. Of course, there's the issue with greed, and not the kind that draws you cards. You don't want to try playing too fast where your consistency suffers and start bonking foolishly. Start with small optimizations, get it drilled into your muscle memory, and scale up from there. Oh yeah, we've got more reverses now too! You can do two supers if you really wanna. Either way, you'll be saving time. Whatever's more consistent for you. And look over here! What? More optimizations? It's a simple climb jump after the transition that lines us up perfectly for an extended super. A wave dash or extended hyper here makes the wall bounce unnecessarily tight with zero time save to be had. An extended super is still difficult but gives a wider window for the up dash into a wall bounce, then optimally moving through the rest of this room into a wall bounce without a climb jump at the end. A climb jump is unnecessary and you will be shamed for it. Just like me. No more wave dash here. We get more height from an extended super, 
Just make sure you do two climb jumps in quick succession to make it over the pillar and grab the wall for the same strat as the sub 50 guide. And now for the biggest change to city, this horrible thing. Well, to be fair, it's not that bad. And it is one of the biggest time saves from the last guide in city. Plus, it's got a lot of good lessons for us. We'll need to understand optimal climb jumps, neutrals, and corner kicks going into this. If you've got all that under your belt, let's proceed with saving over two seconds. From the last room, you should be wave dashing toward this spring and using it to get next to the traffic block on the left. Now let's get this set up right with optimal climb jumps. This involves spacing out your climb jumps so you maximize the height on each jump. One thing to be very careful of here is accidentally activating the block if you don't climb fast enough. So how fast should you be climbing? You can be a little faster about the first two climb jumps on the block, but make sure you get over it on the second jump. This section alone could use some isolated practice. After that, proceed with two more or less anxious but spacious jumps, followed by a third jump being a neutral into a wall kick on the next bit of wall and hold right. You don't have to travel too far to the right for the upright demo dash into the corner kick. Just aim to be smack dab in the middle of this section here. After the upright demo, hit that corner kick, but don't hold any directions. If you release your directions early enough while holding jump, you'll land very cleanly onto the platform. If you've got a problem with the upright demo and always fall a little short, this is a situation where a normal upright dash may be better suited for you. Try both, pick the more consistent one, stick with it, you get the picture. Woo, you're done! Do the same end strat, shoot for a 1 minute 25 second time, and wow, this is gonna be another long video, isn't it? Let's see if we can get by sight a little faster. Luckily, we're not really doing all that much different. Optimizations everywhere. After hitting the block, jumping right after hitting it is possible and it lets you land on the ground much faster because... Celeste. At least it helps you optimize the next room by short hypering through the transition and bunny hopping on the other side for some distance. Did I mention that we're trying to optimize movement? Now time to optimally optimize this next optimal <clears throat> My bad. There's something new here, so ignore that. We're about to hit our first ultra of the run. After getting a taste of ultras, there's no going back, but only if we can do them right. Remember, try not buffering your jumps off the ground or you won't get that precious 1.2 times boost. Start with hypering in, left dashing through the dream block, then make sure to jump so you're in the perfect position to wave dash. And now look at this path. Ain't that a beauty? You know an ultra is in order, so with all that speed you got from that wave dash, down left dash toward the ground, and right after you hit the ground, press and hold jump while flying into the next dream block with the left dash, jump out, and do another ultra while we're schmoovin'! Psst, squeeze out some more speed with a double dream jump here. It'll be good practice without getting penalized, and more speed equals more fun. You're welcome. More ultras! Woo! Let's go! That ultra lines you up nicely for the up left through the dream block here. Then you know what you must do. No climb jump, please. Thank you. But you know what kind of jump we're gonna do? Is a double dream jump. Again, repetition is the key. Get those two jumps nailed down so that you can climb jump into this corner and up left demo dash through the block safely. Let's just jump straight into this room. I've ignored this room the last few times, so it needs a little luck. But really, there's only a few things to talk about. Firstly, after the left and down right dash, you can do a jump at the bottom of the dream block, which gives you enough horizontal distance to get over the pillar and down left toward the secret passage. Proceed as normal. Keep going. Now these three tokens get tricky as I'm sure you know. Let's start with a wave dash into a right dash and dream jump to hit the first token. Then immediately go for a wave dash back toward the dream block. Slide down until you're clear to left dash and jump to the second token. Then for the last token, take a stroll to the dream block, right dash and jump over the platform. Then you can run away with a hyper out of that hellscape. Please don't die and get your repetitions in. I think we need more ultras, so here's one, and here's another. Okay, wait, this ultra is pretty nice. Not because it's different or anything, but it's a great place to practice them reliably. While we're here, make sure you wave dash and hold jump out of the room close to the transition to make the next one easier because we need to get this part down right. Remember, the springs suck, but we've got a new fun pattern of strats to practice and speed right through this. All you need is to practice this room. A lot. Consistency. That's gonna be a big deal from now on.
Just because you can't die doesn't mean you can't lose a lot of time. Anyway, with the wave dash into this room, it should give you enough distance to set up this quick little string of inputs which boils down to a wave dash, followed by a corner boost immediately afterward. If you wave dash early enough, you'll regain your dash and can proceed to right dash when Madeline is hovering over this window so you land cleanly on the following ledge. Make sure you're far left enough on that ledge so you can extend it hyper into a wicked ultra that'll take you out of this room. And the rest is history. Run away with that 2 minute 15 second time into resort, easily one of the hardest levels in intermediate to advance Celeste speedrunning. There is no shortage of struggles here. Realistically, if you're looking to make the biggest difference in your any% percent runs, here's where you want to start. City and Sight are probably getting boring to you, which makes it very easy to skip over practicing resort. Let's motivate you a bit. We want a time in resort of 6 minutes and 15 seconds or lower. The sooner you shoot for the moon and try getting multiple sub 6 times in your individual practice runs, you'll have a much better time running this game. Practice your cycles. Practice your life cycles, practice your death cycles, and practice your difficult strats. Do not underestimate resort. Start with rooms, then practice full checkpoints, then some back-to-back -back checkpoints, and finally get to your full runs. You'll be blown away by how this approach reinforces your muscle memory and understanding of this game. So, with that out of the way, nothing changes really beyond some optimizations. Up until you get the key in the door. Now these next two rooms, you'll be upset with me about, but consider this. It's a good learning experience and you'll get better at the game. If you decide to do these rooms, practice them back to back excessively, more than you think you'll need to. Plus it's also so fun to do. First room is just another bit of practice with corner boosts. You want to enter this room with a right dash and a downright dash after the door unlocks, then buffer a jump out of the transition to hyper. Only one of many, many times you'll be buffering inputs out of a transition. On the first crate, corner boost and you'll glide right over the towels. This gives you a chance to downright at the bell, hit the talk button, and cutscene skip right afterward. That's a bit tricky, but manageable. Now let's get a lot tricky. Whatever you do, just make sure to crouch dash through the next transition so you can do another transition hyper, and here's where you're gonna corner boost against the- No! Nope! Nope! This isn't a corner boost! If you're corner boosting, you're doing it wrong! What you want to do is simply climb jump after hitting the wall, but this timing is gonna be tight. You can't just dilly dally on this corner, so make sure you climb jump very shortly after running into the corner and hold jump until you're lined up ever so perfectly with this crate. Now get ready for some speed. These are the inputs you'll want to copy. Extended super off the crate, wave dash on the towels as soon as you're able to, downright while hovering over the left side of the painting in the background for an ultra, then glide on the books for just a moment. You're gonna skirt right under this bunny in style. Then remember to press jump before falling off the books. After holding jump until you're under the middle of the next crate, downright again into another ultra and you're in the clear. You can also throw in a wave dash here instead. Either way, we just wanna get from the beginning to the end of this room and don't care how we do it. Wanna see some jank? These tentacle things are too slow for us. Thankfully, this isn't actually jank. It just takes a while for these bunnies to kick in when you first activate them. So once you land on the platform, jump immediately, then wave dash as fast as possible to avoid dying. If you land on them and wait before jumping, they'll be activated and murder you on the wave dash, so optimize. Speaking of optimize, this wall bounce on the left side, too slow. You've got a perfectly usable wall right here on the right side and even better, if you glide along the left wall into the next room, you can execute another neat little transition strat like in City. Except this time, instead of a climb jump, we're going to buffer a small wall kick to avoid flying up into the sky, then execute an extended super right away. And now that we're in this room, try out this silly corner boost by upright dashing at the bottom left corner of this platform. Hell yeah. Now, short wall bounce here, extended a hyper here, then a hyper, wave dash, and wall kick into another wave dash here, get through this last room and hyper through into huge mess. Screw this checkpoint. Selfishly, trying to record this checkpoint consistently room for room was a nightmare. Objectively, this checkpoint is a nightmare. It will require a ton of practice. Break it up into three routes up to each button using the speedrun tool and go nuts. Speaking of which, if you haven't downloaded it, go download it. 
I've got directions on how to get it in the sub hour video, and from this point on, there's no higher recommendation I can make to optimize your speedrunning practice. It all starts with this dreaded hub room, which I've cleverly skirted around talking about for two whole guides now. Unfortunately, there was no way around it this time. This is easily one of the most choreographed and unique combination of inputs in the whole game, especially considering the length of the room. So let's break it up into three sections. First, we've got a super going into the room, a wall bounce, wall kick, and climb jump onto the towels. Extended super till full height, and execute a full height wall kick to line up to the towels for a demo hyper, followed by an up dash. Now here's the tricky section. It looks like two right dashes followed by a down dash. And that's exactly what it is, but it can be tricky to do the first right dash into the second one. This is because we need to jump over this ledge, but we can't press jump too fast or else we'll super right over it. So make sure your jump occurs after leaving the dash state so you can do that one tile jump into a right dash and buffer down dash or down left dash. Then it's a simple down right and down dash into section number two. Now do the two right dashes you learned from the last guide, go down and around and you'll find yourself in this awkward corner. This is an extended super where you hold jump, run into the wall, then up dash and wall bounce off the books while holding right for dear life so you can wrap around the towels above and land cleanly. So where's the difficulty here? Well, this extended super is kind of annoying. Too early of a jump will result in bonking the books right above you, but you can't move farther right to resolve this issue since you won't regain your dash with the coyote frames. So the jump with this extended super needs to be more delayed than you think. As long as you run into the wall with a dash in reserves, you'll be able to do the wall bounce without issue. Now, on to section three. You should be standing on these towels. It's not enough that we had one weird super, but it's time for another one. Now this one is going to be even weirder than the last one and for the opposite reason. We need to jump not too early as to bonk, but not too late as to run into the towels to the left. The answer? Press jump when Madeline is over this white towel. That's really it, but it's a tight window to hit since you're right next to it. Then the rest is just a bunny hop, wall bounce on the right side crate, climb jump over the book pillar with a down left towards Oshiro, then stroll over and talk to him side cutscene skip and get away from that weirdo, woohoo! Oh wait, here, do a reverse hyper into down right dash to fly by faster. If you struggle to do this on top of the towels, do it down in the corner with the books and keep running from that freak, woohoo! This room? Just add an ultra after hypering in and upright to hit the token, then super out of there. This next one, just do it faster. Down right and down dash after the transition and fastball to the books and follow that up with a short, then a long hyper. And you've already got this corner kick in the bag, buffering crouch jump out of transition for the win. Nice job. But we've got two more to get to and many itty bitty movement improvements to implement. One of them is right now. Extended hyper into crouched bunny hop, wall kick on the left side, then up dash through the transition while hugging the right wall. This is important because here, we're gonna do one of them fancy transition wall bounces without holding a direction. Our goal is to line up with these towels on the left so we can demo hyper, regain our dash, then down left into an ultra and, this is the tricky part, trying to time this up dash into a wall bounce over to, oh God, go away. Jump in wall bounce out of there, do some stuff. Now for the second route. I love this setup for the next room. Hyper bunny hop into wave dash after the books and hold jump until after the transition. Then simply buffer a down right, jump as soon as you hit the ground, then climb jump and wave dash on the pillar, then up right out. Moving on, fast fall down to, bite. Extended hyper into down right through the gap, then hyper away toward the final button. This could be quite a difficult section, so just don't die, honestly. There is one fun strat here where if you fast fall through the left gap, once you're at the bottom, reverse super into an extended super and up dash through the gap. But honestly, if you struggle too much with this, just stay safe. Again, I think pushing yourself makes you a better player, but this guide has a lot of changes as it is, so more unsafe strats like this can be demotivating to die to. But I will vouch for this room's new strat. The tightest point here is going to be this bunny, so follow closely. Buffer down left after the transition, right dash, then do a small wall kick, hop, and wall bounce onto the first pillar of towels. The rest of this is simple if you've timed it properly. Walk off, jump on the lower platform, climb jump right away when interacting with the wall, and down left between the bunnies. This room no longer sucks. Yeah. Last button hit, then grab the key and, wow, screw this guy, into elevator shaft. 
If this table is anything to go by, we can see that elevator shaft is low on our priority list. So simply put, at the top, extended hyper and ultra into the next room. Only thing I want to mention here is something kind of neat. Buffer two left dashes at the very right side of this cabinet in the background. Then you should be set up to up dash into a wall bounce to get to the second platform cleanly. Remember to take the checkpoint here, but just know, next guide, we ain't gonna be afraid anymore. But if you're still struggling with this, tio has got a fantastic guide on how this demo dash works. Please check it out. And now we're at a pretty interesting checkpoint. That is, if your definition of interesting is fucking anxiety inducing. So if you wanna tear through whatever sanity you may have left, it's time to practice. Just keep 20% of it left in the reserves for Ridge and Summit though, because wow, there's some changes there. Let's start with some more funny Celeste shenanigans. After hypering into this room, fuck you, Oshiro, for what's about to come, down left and skip this cutscene while in the dash state. That means you just gotta press pause shortly after doing a down left dash, and after skipping the cutscene, press jump, and you'll go flying to the other side of the room. Once you're under the exit, try wall bouncing on the right wall because optimal. Nothing changes here except greed. Try to extend it hyper closer to the ledge, jumping with your coyote frames at the end into the transition so you only have to right dash instead of upright dash to the top of the snow platform. Here, it's just more greed. A right dash into the spring, right dash to hit the token, then here's a pretty scary and deadly section, no sugarcoating this. Simply put, it's a hyper then a hyper bunny hop in short succession to get over the grounded bunnies. And the goal is to land on the spring then wall kick on the snow platform to hit the second token. Trouble is this hyper into hyper bunny hop. It's got some weird timing, so running through this a couple times with speedrun tool is highly recommended. But the rest is fairly straightforward. You're doing great. Once you enter this room, hyper bunny hop over the first spring, right dash and short jump onto the next spring then right dash into climb jump and right dash over to the last spring, but this time down dash to the platform in front of the third spring and immediately extended super to the last spring. Kind of scary, but doable. Hyper out of there, then wave dash near the edge of this piece of the roof to get into these consecutive right dashes. We're not gonna let this guy even pass us this time. We'll just demo hyper at the end and out of the room. If you don't like the right dashing chain through the crystals, you could still resort to the hyper bunny hop in this room and just make sure you exit with some momentum. Home stretch! Whatever you do, just make sure you have a plan. And that goes for every room in this guide. If you're looking for a challenge, then obviously I've got one for you. I guarantee that the satisfaction felt from hitting this room clean for the first time at this speed is so rewarding. Buffer the first wave dash after the transition, then wave dash again when right next to this tile in the background to guarantee you don't miss, and hold jump until you land on this wooden platform. Hyper over the first set of bunnies, bunny hop over the second set, hit the spring, then right dash to the first snow platform. This right dash needs to be earlier than you think. The closer you are to this set of five bunnies, the better. Extended hyper off of it, bunny hop, and climb jump into a right and upright dash to land cleanly at the top. Now, another hyper bunny hop. Right dash through, then short jump into downright dash. Let's wrap it up with an extended hyper, right dash, extended super, and be careful to avoid this bunny, into climb jump, into upright dash. Then finish in style with an extended hyper, downright toward the race snow platform, extended hyper again into a bunny hop, and right dash to victory! Whew! Do your fingers hurt? Was that stressful? If not during practice, it sure will be during a full any percent run. But the stress does show us what kind of strats we'll be capable of when put in these situations. That's why starting practice with checkpoints and working our way up to the full any percent run is super helpful. It allows us to get used to that stress so we're not shaking and sweating when we're golden all them splits. And this will be especially important in Golden Ridge. Let's look back at this handy dandy table because I worked hard on it and I think it's pretty insightful, okay? It only took like 10 minutes. What are you talking about? If we look at everything from here on out, we can see that percentage wise, the change in strats have had the most impact in Ridge. There's a lot of quality of life strats, but also some really tough implementations of tech from our last two videos. These will both refine your ability to execute and teach some optimal stuff. If you haven't guessed it, improving our abilities and optimizing is the whole point of this video. Have I been referring to optimizing too much already? Let's jump in. Sure, I could talk about this first super and then hyper into down dash to the cloud or the wall bounce out of the bubble into an immediate right dash into upright dash, but none of that would be as wild as this strat right here. 
Hell yeah, more ultras! It's exactly as it looks. A reverse hyper into a downright dash with some of that sick ultra momentum sprinkled on right before you jump off the ledge underwater. Hardest part? Not downright dashing too late or too early. With the right timing, you should fly toward Granny. Hi, Granny. Jump on the ground, cutscene skip, upright to the ledge, and execute another extended hyper into Ultra. Bye, Granny. And you know what? Another Ultra after the transition. Ultra's for everyone. You know, we can get pretty wild and crazy with this room, but that's hard. For now, let's just jump with that last Ultra, then right dash into the wall and climb onto it. Then an extended super and right dash will get you out real quick. After wave dashing out of here using the bubble, glide off the cloud and upright demo onto the left side of the next cloud. This placement is important because we're going to be abusing cloud momentum all through Ridge. If you time and place an extended super properly, you can get your dash back and get a huge vertical leap from the jump portion of the extended super. It comes from delaying that jump until after the highest point of the cloud. Then you'll have enough height to up dash onto the crumble blocks and hyper over the spikes. Hyper again out of the room while you're at it. This room can be annoying but the entry cycle makes it very easy to wave dash, bunny hop, extended super twice, then demo hyper out. Even better, that demo hyper sets you up for a corner boost here in the next room. Then two climb jumps and a right dash gets you to the end. Easy. After the fun Archie stuff, get to this ledge and hyper out. In this room, buffer a wave dash and bunny hop on the first cloud, then upright to the second cloud. This can be a bit scary, but it'll be the same idea as the other cloud we extended supered on. Just make sure to move to the left on the cloud, and remember, initiate the extended super and jump later than you think. If you're too early, you won't get the height for this bubble. If you do it right, you should be able to upright dash into the bubble, and then up bubble instead of upright bubble, followed by another up dash. But you may be wondering now, how the heck do we get this transition wall bounce? Easy, we hold right as the transition occurs, then when it's over, buffer a jump, and you'll still get the wall bounce and save a couple frames. It's funky, but it works. I ain't holding your hand through all this. Just start working on hitting this corner kick faster, transition super into a corner boost into wall bounce here, then later, grab this block and whoa, boy, this needs explaining. This strat saves like a second. If you don't want it, don't do it. But if you do, all you gotta know is that you have to line up the bottom of the moving block with this little lip. Then we're just gonna do a reverse wave dash into an ultra and hold down the whole time to not bonk. It's just really fast because of that extra bit of momentum given to you by that block. It's like the momentum boost on the reverse hyper from the last time, except that 1.2 times speed really does kick things into overdrive. The up dash is tricky to time, but like all things, gotta practice. Optimize, optimize, optimize! Use an extended super on that cloud just like before to get to this block sooner. One out here, do this. Looks tough, but it's a very easy setup. Literally all you gotta do is left bubble, then let go of all directions. Then fall and press jump once you're next to the corner. Then wall bounce and keep moving. Ah yes, what a wonderful room. A wonderful room to ultra, baby! No, not that one. Sorry, we ain't ready for that. Instead, we're gonna grab the block as normal, bring it to the ground, then get ourselves ready on this little platform. Bringing it to the ground early gets it at the right height for us to ultra off of it and nab that extra momentum along with the 1.2 times ultra boost and fly through this gap. Your cue is to wait for the top right corner of the block to pass this wire in the background. Then extended hyper into that sick ultra and make sure you stay crouched by holding down right the whole time. If you bonk the wall, just demo hyper like you learned in the sub 50 video. These last two rooms, I no likey. They're tough and easy to kill time in, but I'll still give you these speedy options since they're still pretty useful. After the wall kick through the transition into this room, wave dash towards the wall. Here, do not use your climb jumps except for when jumping over the ledges. Since the wind is pushing us, all we gotta do is neutral a couple times, climb jump and hold right, then neutral once more, then climb jump and hold right again. Wrap it up with an upright dash and we can skip this whole bottom area altogether. We went over this room in the sub 50 guide, so go through your paces and instead of an upright to the wall, up bubble, then up dash into a wall bounce. And we're here at one of the most difficult checkpoints in the game. Unfortunately, it's one of those checkpoints that only gets harder as we try to go faster. But that just means it'll be more rewarding when we nail our strats and speedrun to victory. Let's slow it down a little bit.
breathe. Stay confident in your abilities, and let's take down this checkpoint with finesse and style. We're a little past a third of the way through the full any percent run, and can already start getting exhausting. Personally, the rest of this IL and landing it cleanly is where the spark for speedrunning gave me that push to keep going and understand that no matter what, with enough practice, it can be done. You can do this checkpoint and take down the rest of this run. Let's go. Wave dash through the transition. Bunny hop, and you should be in the perfect position to wave dash on the first crumble blocks. Then extended super into the third set of blocks and upright dash up to the wall or onto the ledge. Hyper out of there. That hyper should land you on the block where you will need to think fast. Immediately right dash and fast fall to the cloud. Get that height, then upright demo to get on the right side of the moving block. It seems scarier than it is. The setup should take care of you as long as you're on your toes. Hyper out to the next room. Bunny hop on the other side and demo hyper into the wooden platform to skip any hassle here. Here's the big one. Hyper into the room off the ledge. Then on the other side, we're going to buffer a wave dash and bunny hop into the bubble. Right bubble, then wait to land to execute an extended hyper, fall closer to the floating platform, then show this wind what you're made of by wave dashing into a downright, ultra under this floating platform by abusing the hell out of coyote frames, right dash onto the platform, up dash into the bubble, upright dash, downright, then extended hyper into a downright for an ultra in the next room where you should have enough speed to right dash to this third spring. We've made it through, but we still have so much more to do. On your way out of here, hyper into the next room, buffer a right dash, and you'll land in the perfect spot to extended demo hyper. Bunny hop on the tiny floating platform, extended super off of the next one, then right dash into a slow climb on the last platform. Then, with the proper timing, you'll be able to hyper right onto the incoming snowball for some cool guy points. Last optimization room. After the crumble blocks, down right toward the bubble, up right bubble, then immediately up dash. Think back to when we held right after the transition at the second to last room and start, where we still managed to get the wall bounce. This works in the same way, except we'll be holding left as we are traveling upward from our up dash. Press jump as soon as you can interact with the wall to grab that wall bounce and start holding right once you get it so you can land in that bubble. Wall bounce your way up, wave dash a bunch of times, and be done with Golden Ridge! Whew. We're shooting for a time of four minutes here. It's pretty steep, but your practice will be rewarded. We're not out of the woods yet though, considering there's three chapters left, and they're quite large. Luckily, there's not a whole lot to learn from Temple. A lot of the developments from the last guide to this one really come down to little optimized moves and new tech implementation with the exception of two checkpoints, Depths from 5A and Mixmaster in 5B, which both save a considerable amount of seconds over previous checkpoints. I'll give you a heads up about Mixmaster. It'll definitely be one of the longest checkpoint grinds out of the entire run, and it's because we'll be exploring a whole new area of Celeste tech we've never touched on before, known as Theotech. We'll come back to that one once we make it to that checkpoint. For now, let's get all the simple explanations out of the way. After hypering into this room, wave dash into downright for all that precious speed toward the bottom bubble, then upright bubble and up dash into the next bubble. At the top, wave dash, then reverse wave dash on the moving block because optimal. Down here, try to up left into a corner boost because again, optimal. Get that key to the door and get into depths. All right, now we can get into it. Two more ultras coming your way. The first can be tricky since it involves a reverse wave dash to hit the button, then downright to ultra, then after a climb jump, you've got a much simpler extended hyper into downright. Press jump for that momentum, then get into position. It's DCB time. DCB stands for Depth's Corner Boost, so naturally that's the name of the strat because of this pesky corner boost here. Could have been more imaginative, but I don't make the rules. Hopefully you've nailed this reverse hyper on the momentum block paired with the bunny hop already, because we're about to make this ending part super annoying. After the bunny hop, we want to make sure we're holding jump the entire time and watch for Madeline passing the left side of this wall in the background. It's gonna come by very fast. In most cases, depending on your bunny hop, you'll only have two frames to react here. Luckily, if you're early, no biggie. You'll lose a bit of time for not getting the corner boost, but still end up on top of this ledge. Now, if you do hit the corner boost, make sure you let go of jump immediately after the climb jump. Hitting that corner boost is bad enough, but we also have to worry about our height and momentum going into the next room. Too much height and momentum can make us slam right into this wall. 
Again, to beat the sub 40 threshold, we're just getting our feet wet with going for this strat since it'll just be good practice for when we go for that cherished sub 30 time. So, what's left? <gasps> just a demo hyper here, wave dash and demo hyper here, wave dash here, corner boost here, and be quick on your feet with the same pattern as last time except the faster hyper bunny hop, faster climb jump than slipping right by this pink block into two down dashes, short pause, and extended hyper, and an up left into the set to wrap up 5A. <sighs> Hope you're excited for Theotech. But first, what's different in the rooms leading up to it? Well, let's take a look at this map. Nothing here, 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 here. Oh, there's two tiny bits here. First, we're not gonna waste our time using all of those momentum blocks. We got a perfectly usable one right here. And of course, it's gonna be annoying to get to. That is, if you still haven't bound two jumps to your control scheme. This is going to be a full height jump toward the wall off of this ledge, then another full height jump off the wall. Make sure you're lined up between the block guiding lines and the spikes, and most importantly, that you're at max height before up dashing. Now, gotta be quick. You need to be on the right side of this block to get its momentum when going up into the next room. So after the up dash, climb jump three times with some height in between each jump, and the third will give you enough height to wrap around the block. Grab the other side, then a well-timed jump climb jump, and wall kick to get out. You know what we say about tricky strats? Practice. A lot. Like, at least a couple times. Thank you. Next room, it's nowhere near as complicated. We're gonna do a down left after climbing over this floating wall, then after the next bubble, we're just gonna left bubble and buffer an up dash into a wall bounce to the next bubble, and fast bubble away until banging your head into the ceiling to safely left dash and go to the ground. Moving on through the mirror! Wow, would you look at that. A lower level of ground right before us. Yeah, this looks like another ultra, but don't press jump. Just glide through the transition so you can do your sub 50 bonk shenanigans. In more exciting news, fall on this seeker after it passes the second pillar, then hit this corner kick. That's exciting, right? Or this movement going into, yeah, it's all pretty straightforward and similar to the sub 50 guide. Now here is something worth talking about. It's Theo time. The biggest reason why Theo is annoying for most here is that the game is designed around clean and predictable movement with a focus on speed, and Theo is none of that. The game suddenly feels like you've got too many snacks in your pockets and are struggling to hold up your pants, and on top of that, you're being chased by seagulls strapped with rockets trying to murder you. So the answer to this is knowing how to handle our snacks and effortlessly dodge the seagulls to get to the game room? Never mind. You've got Theo in a rock. Thankfully, the game does give us a tool to work with this. Momentum. When hypering or dashing into grabbing Theo, you're preserving that momentum that you ran into him with over a longer distance. And if we look back at how ultras work, we can see that dashing and interacting with the ground will give us a 1.2 times boost to our previous speed. So let me ask you this. If we extended hyper or wave dash, then downright into grabbing Theo, how do the boost stack up? Well, we end up getting that 1.2 times boost from the Ultra Momentum, grab Theo, and continue moving at that speed. But there's a slight trick we can use to exploit our speed even further. Usually with a normal Ultra, you hit the ground with momentum after the dash state and you get 1.2 times that speed. But what happens if you do the down right when too close to the ground, like say if you did a normal extended hyper on flat ground? You'll be hitting the ground during your dash state and still get your 1.2 times speed, but only for the duration of that dash. This also means your jump will just be something similar to a wave dash. However, if we downright dash into and grab, say, a heavy annoying rock, while we have that 1.2 times speed, then jump when the pickup frames from grabbing are over, we'll fly through the air and keep that boost. Oh, we forgot a critical component. Release down during the pickup animation, and now we keep that boost except with Theo in hand. This is what makes an advanced strat like the last room of Mixmaster possible, which we will not be learning. And it's what's going to make this new grounded ultra strat we're doing here in the second room possible. I present to you, the Theo Ultra. Throw Theo out in front of you. Now, you want to extend it hyper and downright into the ground right before interacting with Theo to make sure you're locking in that 1.2 times boost. Then, grab him and buffer a jump out of those pickup frames from the grab. Hold jump and you'll beat that first seeker right over the head. This next part can be clunky, but it's all about nailing the Theo movement. After a wall kick, continue holding right as you let go of grab to throw Theo, but immediately upright dash after throwing him to fall to the spring together. 
Proceed with the straightforward movement, then towards the end, short hyper into Theo and grab him before going through the transition. The Seeker Gauntlet is about to get a lot scarier and a lot more difficult, so I won't blame you if you choose not to go through with these strats. But I'm telling you now, this is one of those sections that you want down to a T as you get lower and lower any percent times. Nerves will get to you if you're not prepared, so I highly recommend taking down this section with speedrun tool like a thousand times over. The hyper in the previous section will allow us to bunny hop not once, but twice in this room, and holding jump will put us in this very precarious situation in front of this first seagull. Uh, I mean seeker, damn it. Once you're hovering over this pillar in the background, throw Theo and dash down right, right away into the button. The seeker will go right in between you and Theo and give you the chance to set up the next section by down left dashing into the corner, then hypering again into Theo into a bunny hop. Same throw at the pillar in the background, land on the spring and up dash into the button. The scariest parts are now over. We just need to continue being careful. It's okay. Good time to go over the backups of this room since we'll more than likely end up using it here. It's just an insta super into a bunny hop and all the strats will fall into place the same way as before. Now let's try this again. Dash into Theo and throw him. Then dash up and grab the button till the seeker comes right at it. Fall, then hyper at Theo for the grab. Bunny hop, and this time you want to throw him when on the left edge of the background pillar, but we're gonna do the same immediate upright dash after the throw so we can bonk the last seeker, down dash, grab Theo, neutral against the wall, and dunk on the seeker again for good measure before hypering away. Let's see that room again without all the slowdown so you know how it's supposed to look. Just like Cliff Face and Ridge, Nailing down this one room and Mixmaster as a whole are the first signs of truly grasping Celeste movement. If you put in the practice to get clean runs through these two checkpoints, you'll be way ahead of the curve when it comes to developing your muscle memory and crushing the sub 40 time threshold. Especially if you can nail down a time of six minutes flat here in Temple. But that doesn't mean we're short of any difficult checkpoints in the rest of the any percent run. Well, yeah, going into reflection, start is going to be a breeze and Lake doesn't have much going for it either. But now we're solidly in the end game. Reflection and Summit are major choke points due to their drawn out rooms that can kill lots of time for us. And if we made it this far, we must be on some sort of PB pace, so skin is starting to get tingly. No worries, this is what this guide and practice are for. Time to get more of our fancy mechanics into these checkpoints. Let's start here in hollows. After a super and hyper out of the first room, down left dash into the Kevin and land on it. Then walk to the left and wait just a moment until Madeline is lined up with the small green block in the background. Then we're going to try to avoid a funny mistake here. Extended hyper and down right into the block ahead. And this is the tricky part. The moment you run into it, you have to grab. Once you grab, you'll trigger it to fall. And all you got to do is jump off of it for the block to start falling. If you buffer the jump, it won't fall at all. Don't be so quick to the punch. But if you jump off too late, even if it falls, the hitbox will still be in the way just enough for the Kevin to get confused and turn the other way in shame. Let's mosey on over to this next Kevin, where we'll get to do a speedy wall bounce. All we gotta do is up dash when passing over the column at the very end in the background, then a jump should give you a wall bounce that launches you all the way to the top of this little green ledge. Hyper out and continue on. Oh, never mind, we're going this way now. After getting launched by this Kevin, glide along the right wall and keep falling while holding right until you can wall bounce up to the wooden platform, then insta super to set up a teeny corner boost on this corner into the next room. That'll get you ready to wall bounce on this left wall up to the floating platform, then jump and wave dash, up dash to hit that bumper and continue on. At the end of this room, hyper here and hold down right to land in a good setup position for the next room. Hyper out, bunny hop on the other side and hold jump. Then we're gonna use two important cues here, so pay attention to the background. Down right dash at the upside down flip of a bird, right dash upon landing, then down right dash while you're hovering over the upper left side of the rock, and you should land cleanly onto the grass platform here, which is the perfect lineup for a wall bounce. This game is gonna become all cues when hitting these lower any percent times, so better start getting used to them. Continue on through the, yeah, just keep ignoring whatever that thing is, and super into a demo out of the room. The demo is important for us through the transition so we can release all directions and buffer only jump on the other side. Hold it and it'll place us gently onto this bumper. Keep optimizing. Transition super, up, right, down, right, right dash into the feather. 
get to the end and full height jump to prepare yourself for an instant demo hyper through the transition. Make sure to hold jump on the other side until you're slightly to the right of this red flower where you're gonna down right, then down right again as you land on the Kevin to skid right by the spikes. Let's play another game of how much are you willing to risk to get this sub 40? We need to play risky and move fast in this last room of Apollos to nail down the cycles. But if we get it under our fingertips, then we'll never need to worry about this room ever again. Let's start with a wave dash out of the feather through the transition. Then we'll do another one of those lovely wave dashes into downright maneuvers through the feather. And here comes the first choke point. We want to upright through the feather bubble to nab it as quickly as possible, then continue on through the dead center of the next feather holding only right to make it through the second choke point between the bumper and spikes. That's why I pointed out this point of the feather to hold right through since it can line you up generally well. Then if you've passed that, you're basically in the clear. You just have to shimmy upright, go between these bumpers, and if done correctly, you'll lose the feather at just the right moment to dash left into the bumper and bumper boost over to the end. Now we're in reflection. But we've been here the whole time. Yes, haha, funny, wow, cool original joke. We don't need to waste any time here. I'm just gonna plug the IL video for you to take a look at the little optimizations and move on to the unbearably long rock bottom checkpoint where there managed to be a whopping 16 seconds of strat optimizations we can get into our muscle memory. Movement and cutting corners is the name of the game. Anything we can find here to make room shorter or easier to avoid silly deaths will get us to this next beast of a level that, as you can see, has time save all across the board. Well, time to bully battling. Let's start with nailing down these dashes out of battle and hit stun. We haven't really focused on how fast we get out of hit stun, we just try to dash out of it. Now with some of our new strats, there needs to be precision with how we time our dashes so we don't... This is the perfect time to test your buffering abilities and to integrate more cues. Remember to press and hold leading up to your small window to react after hit stun and not to do it before the 4 frame buffer window or else... Also, don't tap or spam dash, that ain't gonna save you either. Alrighty, after our first bump into battling, down right dash after getting launched to the inner left side of this gap in the background, jump and extended super off the green ledge into her again. You should be able to hit her before she can get another blast out. Here, we're gonna down dash after the battle and hit stun, then extended hyper into a corner boost and up dash to another hit. Then we'll be a little risky here and hyper bunny hop into an upright to get her, then we'll continue with our day. Continue to optimize. Up right out of hit stun into that block, then hyper into her, then down right out of this hit stun, run into her again. After a down right at the right side of this green background block, just remember this sound and totally not ludicrous advice. Can't get nerves if you're moving too fast. So just keep that in mind for rooms like this next one. Hyper through the transition and hold down right in the next room. We want to right demo dash underneath this wall as soon as we can, followed up with a wall kick on the right and a climb jump into wall kick on the left wall as we effortlessly thread the needle between these pairs of death spheres. Fall to the crystal, then hit the jump on this wall bounce as soon as possible up to battling and climb jump into her. If you've got your strats down, it's almost like those hitboxes aren't even there. This just needs to be a short extended hyper into upright at the beginning here, then fast fall and hug the right wall at the end. Wave dash at the very bottom and attempt an upright demo dash when Madeline is over the background rock into a corner boost into Madeline. Then buffer a downright toward the green block and hyper into the feather, then just hold right until you can dash into her. A couple rooms later, look! The good old extended hyper into ultra... Nope. Remember, you can't preserve ultra momentum while hitting the ground in the dash state, so this'll just be a wave dash. But at least you get to corner boost right afterward. Oh, and here's another cue to right dash out of hit stun at this green block in the background. Play like you mean it! Extended hyper and down right into her. Fast fall to that crystal. Fast fall to that tiny ledge on the left and whip around the spikes with a reverse hyper into ultra. Let's go, we're almost there! Don't let the nerves catch you now. This strat has got two cues. First one is where you're smack dab in the middle of this gap being carried by the block where you want to insta hyper toward battle in. Then after passing the halfway point of the screen, Stop holding jump and you'll thread the gap into Badalyn's face. Moving on to the end of this room, jump and wave dash out so you've got some momentum in the other room to wave dash onto this block, glide off the fourth one, then upright into Badalyn and keep going. At the end of the room, hug the right wall as you exit so you can fall directly into the feather in the next room. Let's cut a corner here with a down left after passing all the spikes, then press and hold down right right after hitting Badalyn 
and a downright dash went directly at the bottom left corner of the spike to hit her again. Now, if we're gonna play any room safe in this whole run, it's this horrible section. Nerves running through the roof, hands as sweaty as can be. Let's just take it slow and do what we know best. Don't die! Everything is going to be the same as the sub-50 guide, except at the very end, we can stand far left on the green platform and insta-hyper toward the springs while holding right. Practice this room many, many times until you feel comfortable, then multiply that number of repetitions by 1,000, and you should be all set. Not practicing enough is bad, but dying here on a good run is worse. Find out every single way can go wrong and have a plan to prevent all of it. With that being said, wrap it up with a hyper through the transition, a wave dash on the first platform, bunny hop, and two more wave dashes into a downright toward battle in to skip this cutscene, climb your way out, and prepare to crush your previous PB after one more chapter. Let's remind ourselves what kind of strat improvements we're looking at here in Summit. Yup, those sure look like improvements. This is gonna be a hard set of strats. Arguably, these strats will be able to carry you all the way down to sub 30 if you happen to nail them all in one go. So just a warning, you don't have to implement all of these strats at once. My challenge to you here is to attempt these difficult rooms so that you can grasp how higher level movement feels, how faster input times wear on you, and figure out what kind of player you want to be. Hard strats refine your Celeste speedrunning knowledge and are tough to wrangle, but will reward you with better consistency down the line and more time to be saved. While simpler, safer strats will ease you into this knowledge, but you may find getting low times more difficult or maybe revisiting changes to your strats more often in order to squeeze every optimal frame from your runs. Whichever move you make, keep this in mind. Your hard work will be rewarded. Getting better at this game is inevitable with quality practice. Do your repetitions, your IL practice, your early, mid-game, and end-game practice, and soon you'll reach this moment of painstaking nerves, but mind-blowing confidence that will ride with you through the end of this run. So, let's begin. We've got two dashes now, let's make use of them. Up right into a wave dash bunny hop, continue as normal to the end where you execute this jump, then up and right dashes into the next room. Extended hyper and get under this first pillar so you can upright twice to the crystal, up dash, climb jump, then wall bounce for a clean landing. Once up here, try this strat on for size. Right dash into the room and buffer a jump for a transition super, then hold that jump until Madeline is right about here with the platform below. This is your cue to upright demo so you catch that spring and can get up to the other side of the room right away. Let's throw in an alternate buffer strat while we're at it. If upright after hitting the spring gives you trouble, I've got something else you can try. It simply involves hitting the spring low, then buffering both an up and right dash consecutively, which helps clear the gap. Hopefully we've got our spatial awareness down for this next section. We're just gonna line up our wall bounces with a right dash here, then here. Then a down left, then an upright, then a hyper, then a, you get the idea. Moving on. Jump into extended super into wall bounce here, then wall bounce and wall kick out of the room. Let's kick off this room with a wall bounce into a wave dash with just a jump button tap so you get low enough to the upright demo, up left into the first spring, and you'll fly right by this second broken pillar. On the right side of it is your cue to down right, down left into the next spring, then upright in between the next two broken pillars followed by a right dash. This room ain't too bad. Just make sure at the end, after the token block moves, you get out of there using an upright, then another upright in the next room to land on the block. After landing, wait to extend it super into the sky with all that momentum followed by two up dashes. More setups and more cues on the way. That's the game now. Hyper into this room, wave dash, and get over to battle as per usual. Then after getting boosted, hold left till you're at this corner of the broken pillar in the back. Cue! Left dash, fall, then up left demo dash just below the left side of this next pillar to do that signature wall kick we're familiar with at this point, and hold jump until you can do a quick grab of the traffic block and fast fall down to battle it. You need to get up and around the block before it's too low and have to wait to activate it again. So, after this boost, up dash at the bottom edge of the background, up right at the top of this background gear, wall kick, and one climb jump should land you on top of the block. No time to waste! Gotta jump once you land so you can wall kick off the little girder, up, upright, up, and upright dash to battle and out of 500 meters. Don't worry, it only gets more difficult from here. 
because in 1,000 meters, we have our lovely friends, the Dream Blocks. You may think, oh, here come double dream jumps again, and you'd be right. But I'm sure you also remember that teensy bit of tech towards the end of that section where we hypered out of dream blocks, right? Oh, for your sake, I hope so. We've got some of the best movement in the game coming our way. Insta hyper and upright at the second barrel through the first dream block. We're already coming in hot with a dream hyper. Just remember, do not dash into a dream block while crouched or it won't work. So no demoing through the dream blocks. At the very end of the Dream Block animation, on your way out, you want to time a Demo Hyper as described before, and you'll end up doing exactly that. Now upright and hit that Demo Hyper again. Right dash and wait, nope, not this time. Just jump and downright for some speed preservation, then get out of there. Woo, Dream Hypers. Let's bring back those double dream jumps. After the transition, upright and right dash through the top of this Dream Block, double dream jump for some speed and height, then upright through the next block with a sick dream hyper afterward. Then hold down right. Demo through this dream block to try and safely dash as high as possible into it. And on the other side, you should attempt another double dream jump, but it's not the end of the world if you miss it. If you dash high enough into the previous dream block, a single upright and right dashes should suffice, then jump out. A small issue you might run into with this strat is executing the double dream jump in a way that makes you corner kick off of this corner, which isn't the end of the world, but it's definitely not fast. So if this is a consistent issue for you, just run with the single dream jump and you'll be a-okay. After two up dashes, get ready for the Dream Hyper Training Facility. After a right dash into jump, ultra, and wave dash, here we are at three Dream Hypers in our way. Here's how it's gonna go. Upright, Dream Hyper. Downright, Dream Hyper. Then upright, Dream Hyper into a wave dash. This is by far the best place to practice this tech. Just run it over and over with the speedrun tool. You'll nail it down in no time. Oh, and you can throw this one in while you're at it. And then this last one. Okay, no more. Just kidding. After the Madeline boost, up left dash when Madeline is right next to this lower half of the square in the background, and you'll get through both dream blocks. Then you've got one more dream hyper off the top here. Remember, no demos through these blocks. Now, how much longer are you willing to put up with me? because 1,500 meters is, you guessed it, horrible to optimize. Yay. You want cool strat? I give you cool strat. If you start this room off on entry with a jump while holding left, up left and up to the crystal, just upright, then upright demo again after passing this window bar in the background into a corner kick. That corner kick can be a bit finicky to time, so give it some time. Simple. This room, not so much. And honestly, this strat is still quite stressful to execute but let's take it step by step. Once you enter the room, hold right and execute an upright demo as soon as possible. Then buffer another upright dash over the first pillar of bunnies. Next, do a small jump followed by up and right dashes. Notice how far left next to the ceiling pillar of bunnies I am. This is very important for this next platform. We need it to fall ever so slightly so that our first right dash won't make us run into this horrible thing. Then the second right dash will actually be a super followed by up and right dashes to the end. You can use the sound effect of the falling platform to get a sense of when you're clear to right dash, but again, drill this room into the furthest depths of your muscle memory for your own sanity. We ain't got much left to work with. This next room gets a little easier now with this strat. Enter the room with a hyper bunny hop, then wave dash immediately after the transition into an upright with a buffer down right dash to run away with that token. Extended super into the wall, then demo hyper out of the room when lined up with the ground. Now we're only changing the beginning and end here from the last guide. So buffer a wave dash when you've entered this room, then proceed with not dying for this room at the end here. Oh, just super out into the next room. Then here you can let go of jump and only hold down right until you're able to right dash, wave dash, and go for the wall bounce into wave dash. If it's too tight of a timing, up and upright dash is fine. Just make sure to land and hyper out for more cues out the wazoo. Hold jump into here since we want to line Madeline up with the corner of this mansion sized mirror. Downright once, then downright again on the right edge of the same mirror to hit a wave dash off of the floating platform. Holding jump again, you should get close to this bottom left corner of the next platform and make that your cue to downright again. Things are getting pretty dicey now with all the speed. Make sure to not miss your chance for a right dash through the crystal followed by two upright dashes and two quick climb jumps. This is a very time sensitive strat. So depending on how quick you can get to this point, you should be able to instantly extend it hyper, downright right before overlapping this picture frame, 
ultra right under this impatient bunny, then upright demo and wall bounce to victory! Honestly, if you nail this room and everything up to this point in this checkpoint, the rest of this level is just a matter of keeping cool and hitting your strats confidently. You've got your PB in the bag! Close out 1500 meters by doing a hyper into this room, followed by a bunny hop, and would you look at that, another cue! When overlapping the sky of the mountain painting, down right and down dash for the first battling boost, then your next cue will be an up left dash when Madeline's pointy head passes the middle of this hole in the mirror so you can wall bounce on the left wall, then do the rest plain and simple. Your third cue, get the hell out of there! Wait, wait. How much time is there to save here in 2000 meters? Almost 13 whole seconds! Yep, there's a lot of waiting around we did last time, but that ain't optimal in the slightest. So let's fix that. We have two dashes for a reason. Up right into a wave dash, then do the same for the following cloud. Easy! Hold jump, demo right, two wave dashes higher up, one wave dash lower. <laughs> this is easy. Now you just gotta... Uh, oh... My... Um... Uh, yeah, let's just, um... Let's just put that one right up there. The understrat will work fine, but just to refine our knowledge here, how does this mess work? It all starts with a wall bounce and wave dash in the previous room, then buffering another wave dash here in this room and keep holding jump. That'll give us just enough distance to downright toward this lower platform, ultra, then follow it with two longish climb jumps on the skinny pillar. Now here's the fun part. In the air after the second climb jump, throw out a wave dash, ultra, then wait until Madeline is about to cross over this background tile to hit downright twice all the way across the screen down to the lower platform, Jump, down dash, then extended hyper into two uprights out of there. Now everything is just gonna feel like a snore compared to that room. At least we can line up this block for ourselves to get a boost when it hits the wall to add to our demo hyper, then upright twice to safety. Damn, it's just not the same. Anyway, don't underestimate this next room. It's quite input heavy, especially with all this wind in our sails. So after hypering in, the pattern is wave dash, upright, wave dash, upright. Wave dash, and hold jump before passing the spikes, but make sure you're holding down right the whole time, then finish up that room. After a couple more optimizations here, and here, we've got an interesting thread the needle type strat. All it requires are buffered upright dash and buffered right demo dash to squeeze into this gap, then demo hyper over to battle in. Optimize! You get it! Come on, we're nearing the end! Oh wow, looky here! The quarter boost that started our intermediate mechanics journey! Hell yeah! This room can get pretty tricky though, and when things are tricky, we use cues to make them easier. At the left edge of this background piece, right dash twice, then fall to the crystal. Once you pick it up, you need to upright into a buffered downright for a wave dash, then you just need two upright dashes. Unfortunately, not all strats can be oh so simple. Thought the last key skip was cool and convenient? Well, time to make it faster and only slightly more difficult. Your goal is to up dash twice while hugging this right wall, and the moment after the transition is where the difficulty starts. We have to buffer two inputs this time around, a jump to get that transition wall bounce, and a small right input so we don't go flying into the scary wall of spikes. We need to hit this Goldilocks zone where we're along the left wall to up dash twice again up to the key area. If we hold right for too long, we'll run into the scary right wall of spikes instead, which would also be kinda lame. Either way, if you end up dying, the double corner kick strat works beautifully here, but the right tap is honestly not that hard to implement, so this is more like a half golden berry strat. Isn't it exciting to play with just a teeny bit of fire? Well, here's some more! After this wall bounce and left dash, we actually have quite a large window here after the extended hyper to up dash. Don't get intimidated by the spikes. And while you're at it, you're at the right height, so just give me a demo hyper on your way out. The fire is getting a little spicy now, but how can you not also try this strat? After hypering into this room, wave dash behind this first rock, then at the thick part of the vine, upright demo dash through the tiny gap, and up dash. Now that's pretty clean! Okay, no more spicy strats. This is all serious, no funny business. We're bringing back the good old don't die here in this last room. All we're adding is a right dash over the background pillar into an upright and climb jump to the spring, then the perfect example of buffering. This left dash into the spring. After the battle and boost, it's literally impossible to hit the spikes. 
Like, no, seriously, no matter how early you left dash, you'll hit the spring. It's awesome. Do what you need to get to the end here, up to Badalyn, and get through the last behemoth of the run. You're finally here! Ah, and why are you screaming? Ah, hush, hush, we've got the music behind us leading us to our PB on the horizon. The level of nerves and excitement whenever I get to 3000 meters is astounding. And I'm sure at this point, you've been feeling the same in your runs. So let's get through this last checkpoint together. No funny business, no testing fate, just winning. Here we go. Nothing but clean movement here. Follow these wall bounces and wall kicks to a T and you'll get right by this section with no problem. This one on the other hand can be troubling. No joke, split up 3k into downdraft, updraft, and no draft during your practice sessions. Go through them repetitively. There should be nothing stopping you from finishing this run with confidence. We started with a simple extended super into upleft in the sub 50 guide, but decided to just get to the platform for safety before executing a reverse super. If you want any additional difficulty here, simply go for the reverse super after the upleft instead. Just make sure you still try to grab and climb up the left wall after the two up dashes, since it's a tad harder to land safely when doing it this way. Now, instead of wasting time going over there with a hyper, let's just insta super and wall bounce off this left wall. Two wall bounces and two up left dashes later, we're at flag 26 already. Stand right and extended super left until you can up dash, climb jump, then wall bounce to make this set of dashes easier to execute. At the end of the string of dashes, this last one is actually gonna set you up by being an extended super. That'll give you enough height to wall bounce, climb jump over, and left dash over to technically flag 24, but we don't need that checkpoint. All you need are two up dashes into a wall bounce, hold jump till you can use your second jump that you definitely have binded to climb jump over the crumble blocks. Extended super, wall bounce up into the spring, then wave dash and wall bounce again to flag 23. Pretty straightforward here. Hyper bunny hop off the crumble blocks and up dash, then upright dash into this ledge. Now, just go right ahead and up left into a buffered up dash to the next flag. Then follow it up with another one. Then another one. Then this is slightly different. A left dash into an up demo for some of that extra height going into the up left and wall bounce. Then all is normal here. Just get up and out to updraft. Honestly, I hate this dang floatiness, but gotta work with what we got. At least nothing is really changing here except for some optimizations and cleaner movement all the way up until this section of flag 13. Granted, if you're nervous, this strat sucks, but it doesn't hurt to try hitting that upright after the spring with a buffered right dash into the last token. Then after a wall kick to hit the spring again, if you really want to play some games, you can up left one directly below the spike here and follow it up with a buffered up dash. That last bit is kind of yikes though, not gonna lie. Here, we're just trying to get quicker. Hit that wall bounce on the second dash, up and upright dash, then at the next crystal, the moment you hit it, you want to up dash and wait to let the wind carry you, then upright to the wall. Follow that up with a climb jump, a scarier than it looks neutral around the two spikes, then climb up to flag 11. Couple more seconds in the bag. All I can say here is to throw in a reverse super if you really want before these dashes, then try hitting this wall bounce. Other than that, keep making your way up. Insta hyper into an up left through the feather and here, try to make it your goal to get above this cloud with one dash. That way you can use the other to dash down onto it and trigger it earlier, following it up with two wall bounces. Almost there, just got up. What? Look, I can't help it. It's only a little spicy. You just gotta hit the upright demo when next to the spike platform, climb jump once, then get over to the next feather. Come on, that's simple enough. Optimize this tiny section with a wall bounce, and now we're finally here! Honestly, put way, way, way more time than you think you need into practicing this last section. I guarantee the first time you make it here, no matter how much practice you've had, you'll fumble some of the strats, which is fine. What isn't fine is losing a PB over a silly death that can be avoided. Be focused, and if nothing else, be safe. No! Regardless, I've broken this up into four sections with patterns you can follow to hammer down this last flag with ease. We'll start with the following. An extended super, upright, right dash, jump, two up dashes, then two or three climb jumps to the next section. Should be straightforward enough. Here, it'll be an upright, right, up, right, two uprights, jump, upright, right, and a demo hyper. 
This demo hyper is here to line us up for the third section where we start with two dashes, an up and a left dash, which will actually be an extended super. From there, we'll wall bounce, right, up, and upright dash, then jump, up, and upright again. It all comes down to this. Last section. Jump, upright, right, up, right, upright. Upright into the final corner boost. A cutscene skip and time called on the run. It's over. This is where things get complicated. Where do we go from here? There's plenty of strats out there still to learn, but if the strats in this video only saved a couple seconds here and there, what will become of the next set of strats? Milliseconds? Frames? Don't worry, I've got plans for how we can tackle Sub-30 as efficiently as possible beyond just a couple strats, but for now, let's give credit where credit is due. Major credits to Tio and Vapo for many, many strat suggestions and changes across every chapter. Their care and dedication to accurate Celeste info dumping has been invaluable to lots of this series. Also, many thanks to Eugene, who also provided lots of guidance and feedback for strats and tech in this video, especially his text document that helped with the mechanics section of this video. He also reviewed the mechanics part of the script before final recordings, and... Let's just say, it wouldn't have been nearly as accurate and helpful as it is now without him. Major credits to both Tio and Thalon as well for going through the behemoth of a script I sent them, which somehow ended up longer than the last one at 42 pages? Sheesh. You both also made very essential comments and changes to the entire guide to make it what it is now. More credits to everyone who's been super supportive through the whole process over on Twitch whenever I was building the guide on stream. Getting suggestions, especially from those trying to break the sub 40 threshold, also helped a ton in refining these strats. Thanks to you for your suggestions and watching these videos. The support has been astronomical. Over 5,000 subscribers? You bet your butts I'm a thank you. And as further thanks, I want to kick this channel into high gear. I've got a video per month plan this year. No more dilly dally. Uh, this one came out a little later than anticipated, but nonetheless, there will be 12 videos this year. Not to say the sub 30 guide is coming out next month, but if all goes according to plan, we may not have to wait over a year for it. Also, I've got this really dumb goal. I don't want to just hit 10,000 subs, but I want to shoot all the way for 100,000 by the end of this year. Not sure if 12 videos is going to cut it, but at least the outrageous goal will get me to buckle down and really put my all into providing great content to all of you. Your support is literally so far out of this world, I won't let you down. Come by my Discord, my Twitter, and my Twitch for all things Celeste, for any questions you may have, and to talk to some pretty cool people. I've also got my Patreon for one-on-one -on -one help with different parts of Celeste, depending on the tier that you jump in on. With that being said, my voice is tired. I've been recording a long time. I'll see you in a couple weeks. Bye-bye.